This is the Throttle Out Show presented by Vixen Industries, the only show where monster truck drivers and mechanics come together to present what's happening in the monster truck community. It's the ultimate combination of torque, horsepower, and trash talk. And now for your hosts. First, straight out of the heart of Detroit Rock City, it's Kid Rock's neighbor and former driver of the BKT ride truck, it's Austin Spence. And the duo deep in the heart of Texas, it's the show owner and daughter of a man who conquered the industry for over 20 years, it's Harley Johnson, along with everyone's favorite Bryce Kenny lookalike, Austin Tweedy. So go ahead, fuel up, strap in, and remember, when in doubt, throttle out. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Make Monday Night Madness. My name is Austin Suspense. I hope you guys are enjoying your Monday evening. I'm just sitting here ready to talk some monster trucks with you fine people with some uh, good old Dr. Pepper straight from the clown's tit. How's everybody doing tonight? Harley, Tweety, what's going on down there in Texas? Straight from the clown's <laughs> tit, man. We're staying hydrated with some high octane. Coffee I, I like tonight. the McMondays. I like McMondays. that. McMondays. That was good. call it McMondays yeah, now. That was nice. Mm-hmm. Nice touch. I like that. Trademark. We own it now. Yep. And out of somewhere in near Paxton, Cooper Knuckles. <laughs> what an intro. What are y'all drinking over there? All I got is a potato. <laughs> All right. Is dinner right now? Are you chowing on uh, some yeah. meatballs tonight, Coop? No, that's a potato, actually. I got potato, That looks a lot like a meatball. That does look like a meatball. meatball. I'm not 100% sure. Here, I'll cut it for you. You ready for this? Look at that. Meat. Not a meatball. Okay. Some <laughs> potatoes. That's how they say it up there in Michigan. They call it potatoes. Potatoes. Yeah. Well, I'm not from potatoes. Michigan, all right? Potatoes. Oh, you don't say potatoes? No. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Mike Riley must be warm there. Yeah, uh, it's actually freezing cold. It's like 12 degrees right now in my basement, and I'm still rocking a short sleeve shirt. So Yo, what's we're getting up? a snowstorm. You know? We are. We're actually about to get like 20 inches of snow come Thursday, and so we excited. at Kalita Motorsports leave for Phoenix on Monday. I couldn't be more excited. It's like, hey, nice. snow, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear y'all are ready to get y'all season started. I'm ready to hear about all your horsepower learnings over there, Team Kalita, <laughs> running the NHRA circuit. Ian Coop and Harley Joe are going to be extremely jealous. But, y'all, we have got a crazy show for y'all tonight. We're going to try to keep the recap as brief as possible just so we can get right down to the discussion, right? We're about to get on what, what, what Spence likes to call the appetizers, okay, for, for yeah. the evening. We'll get the appetizers out of the way. <laughs> then we'll get to the main Your mozzarella course. sticks, your potato skins, your mashed potatoes, all the, the good chips. Your chips uh, and queso. Sorry. Hey, right. that's what I've got. Pickles. Your fried pickles. Some queso. Yeah. Side, side of ranch dressing. <laughs> yeah. Then oh, God, no fried pickles. Nobody likes pickles. we're going to get... Are, what? Are what? How do you not like fried pickles? Pickles in general are awful. Oh. Mm. You oh. are a disgrace. Fight me. Mm. Listen, uh, Spence, I just want to let you know right now, uh, you are being banned. Um, mm. The reason is... Did I just get pickles. called a disgrace from the man with the pink headphones? Yeah, they're comfy. <laughs> <laughs> banned? Anyway, monster trucks. What are we starting with tonight? Because I know we got a lot to cover. <laughs> monster trucks. We're actually going to start just real quick, just to recap the uh, the Supercross from this past weekend. And before I get into any of that, I just want to say uh, a shout out to Paige Johnson and their family. We're thinking of y'all, and uh, hope y'all have a a better evening and obviously a better tomorrow. But we are thinking of y'all, Paige and family I'll now coming out of the the super cross world they were back in anaheim again for the second time this season the show did not disappoint harley and i were just kind of catching up on everything that happened at the show the 250 race was absolutely insane uh, i'll give you the top 10 right now which is starting in first place christian craig michael mosman hunter lawrence nate thrasher jake swole carson brown joe shimoda with the monster energy suzuki we had carson mumford in eighth robbie wageman in ninth, and then in 10th place, we had Shane McLarath. Now, what was crazy about the 250 race was that Vince Freezy, my man out of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, got the whole shot on the race, 
He was doing really good. Happened to slip into second place. I think he gets around a, a few more laps. I think he just happens to go into third place. And then, oh my gosh, I swear with like two laps left in the race, this guy wipes out. And I mean, he buys the dirt. I hard. saw that. Okay, yeah. so like he crashes hard, right? Well, he gets up, he's trying to get off, and then the, the guy behind him, I can't remember who the rider was, literally as he's like down on his hands and knees, he's trying to get up, the rider behind him comes just flying behind him and hits this guy with his front wheel right in the head, almost knocks Freezy out. He doesn't know where he's yeah, at. He's see seeing it. stars. He's trying to get off the track and did not finish the race. That was nuts, Cooper. It was it was pretty crazy. I was in complete shock the whole time. I was like, oh, Oh my gosh, this man's gone. He's done. He's done forever. Yeah, I, I, he, he was lights out. I feel bad for the guy. He, like I said, he got off to a great start. Got start. Got the whole shot. Um, and then obviously he couldn't even finish the race. So it was unfortunate for him. Now going into the big boys, the big class, the 450 SX. Your top ten winning with the for the first time this season, which was Eli Tomac followed by Jason Anderson. That, that was good back and forth competition between those two. Then Chase Sexton, who's been competing well all year, so there's your top three. Then followed by Dylan Ferrandez, Malcolm Stewart, Marvin Musquin, Justin Basha, Cooper Webb, Dean Wilson, and then in 10th place. Um, did I have this right? The 450 results? I actually... Oh, was it? No, Shane McElrath. Sorry, he was 450. And then the 250 was Derek Kelly. He was 10th place, so... Sorry about that. I was getting a little ahead of myself over here. But Supercross <laughs> did not disappoint. I'm looking forward to this weekend's upcoming race. But, um, yeah, that, that was awesome. I did learn a little bit about the bikes and watching the presentation that, you know, like Spence and Cooper, you all know, after most races, at least on Monster Jam's trucks, right, the company trucks. Like, say you go and you rip off the planetary bolts. When you're taking the planetary off, you're going through the gears after a weekend. A lot of, like, nine times out of ten, you can actually, like, it's suggested you replace those planetary bolts, right? Because uh, just nah. as much weight. Well, a lot of guys don't, right? And most independents have really don't because it's really not necessary. But Monster Jam, at least at one point, they didn't care if you change those planetary bolts all the time. Well, I did find out on the Supercross that is actually a one thing that they are religious on is changing out those bolts on those bike each bikes each and every weekend. Thought that was pretty interesting. A lot of those bolts that they have are actually custom made at their machine shop i guess for their local race teams or whatever um they actually custom make those bolts like a lot of the ones that they get straight from the factory over here there's nothing wrong with it but the ones that they get made in the machine shop are actually you can get off the bike a little bit uh quicker like for example you're trying to rip off the bolt for the air filter where you got to go out and you gotta get a flat head get her in the right spot and then get the bolt out or now they have it where it's just hand tight you can get it with your hand i thought that was pretty interesting kind of like um I mean, Coop, you probably remember like the the earlier versions of the Patrick housings. Sometimes getting that that cap off for the the to, to pour in the oil for the third could be kind of challenging. Like you need like a oh, pair of channel locks or pliers to get that out. Yeah, you and use then channel locks a lot. with the latest update, the the Patrick <laughs> XC housings, you obviously don't need that anymore. It's got a nice little rip to it. Get that baby out of there. So. Little something I learned with the Supercross. Now, moving on, Harley Joe, where do you want to start with the highlights? Because we do have some sweet video highlights sent to us. Um, did you want to start with the uh, this word? I can't remember. Yeah, Salisbury and Salisbury. wherever that's at. Does anybody know where Salisbury is at? Salisbury uh, sounds like it would end with Massachusetts. I don't know. Massachusetts. It sounds like a salad dressing. Mm, <laughs> or a steak. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry in case you guys haven't t couldn't tell. <laughs> See, so. I ate. You should have ate. <laughs> Let's start with the Salisbury highlight. These highlights were sent to us from none other than Back Channel Productions, Nick Davis. Huge shout out to Nick Davis. Thank you so much. These highlights are awesome. You have great video qual camera quality, sir. Thank you so much. Go check out some background productions. They got all kinds of good Whoa, go footage. But this looked like a pretty cool independent show. This isn't a Monster Jam show. Cool arena set up, and they look like there was plenty of, of seats there. Like, this was a, a big arena, and then this guy going crazy. He had a kind of a rough start to his Monster Jam first quarter, but worked out pretty good here this weekend for him. Anybody know who was driving Overkill Evolution at the show? Um, I do not know that. Gosh, I, someone brought it up, and I am drawing a blank. I have no idea who it is because it's not Mikey. Um, but no, I got to say, it's really weird not seeing the Vodders camp out a whole heck of a lot you know because you know first quarter monster jam there were always one of the teams you know either two or four truck teams that would always be out there in the monster jam stadium schedule or even arenas and seeing them you know kind of taking a, a 
a step back a little bit and only in, doing independent stuff. I mean, there's still. I mean, good lord, look whoa, at this. Whoa. <laughs> uh, Nasty good. rollover. Hey, and that was being driven show. by R.J. Turner. Wait, War Wizard? Yeah. Wow. Huh. Yeah, he will be Damn. back in War Wizard this upcoming week in Wisconsin. Per Nick Davis Back Channel Productions, as I'm going through the messages right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, and then I see Dave Reif's uh, ride trucks showing in the back over there from uh, ATR here in Michigan. So I'm assuming this was up in Massachusetts, if I remember. Well, I or think maybe somebody Delaware? put Maryland. Someone said Maryland. It's Maryland. Maryland. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. My geography. You know what? <laughs> Show suspenses until Thursday, so I don't have to try <laughs> yeah. learning where the hell places are at right now. <laughs> But this is a stacked lineup for a small arena show, to be honest. These are some big names, some big name trucks. So, I mean, whoa, it's whoa. nice to see that everybody went out and put on an awesome show. Even though, yeah, there's not many people in the stands. But hopefully next time they do another event, people will see this footage from Back whoa. Channel. Holy crap. Good Lord. Those sidewalls were amazing. But I hopefully, think, you know. I think, Spence, that the the Bursey family was at the show. I don't know if they were competing, if they were out behind the scenes, hanging out. But they were present at this show. I wonder if he was announcing. Jeff Bursey as announcer is hilarious. Oh, dude, he's one of the best, <laughs> I swear. Jeff Bezos? No, not Bezos. Oh, and <laughs> Trey Myers. Hey, get this. Trey Myers drove Iron Warrior. That's pretty awesome. Ooh. Trey Myers is one of the – I think he's the OG <laughs> for Iron Warrior, correct? You're Back when Iron Warrior was like on a Ford Ranger. You're asking the wrong guy there. I have no idea. Comments. Help me out. <laughs> Go to the comments. Now, Harley, let's get to our next set of highlights, which I believe are from the Houston show this past weekend. Yes. MJ Stadiums. Uh, Stadium Tour Yellow. They only had one show wow. in Houston, and then next weekend they'll be back in Houston the same tour with two shows. The same tour, huh? Yep. That's going to be kind of boring. I mean, no, no offense. Well, I mean, I mean for the, the fans, they don't, been great. they don't get to see a different lineup of drivers. What so. is this? What? I think that was skills. That was holy skills. crap. Yeah, that was almost too much. That was cool. Whoa. That was also too much. Little, that that was was too much. Kayla. No Kayla had a rough start in racing. I Man, was I'm... watching. She uh, like first round of racing against Tyler Meninga, and she went to the berm and rolled the truck over. It was mm. it was pretty bad. This guy, Ryan Anderson. He's this just, guy, Ryan, yeah. almost sweeped the whole show. He won everything except for two-wheel. Tyler took the two-wheel skin, or two-wheel win. He just does not make it easy on the rest of the competitors, man. Did y'all see the picture that somebody, one of our friends, got with him this past weekend? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Aaron I've Frederick, 13th Matia with our shirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Oh, man. Sure. To pose with our shirt. Here comes flying. Yo, you want to bet five bucks to tie bar breaks? <laughs> I thought you lost a finger by now. Ah, nope. Oh, nope. Not. But the tailgate fell off. That was pretty smooth, though. Not gonna lie. It Bari is on one. a mission this year. Who I believe is in either third or fourth place on this tour. I think it goes um, Ryan, Tyler, and then. Oh, I was just looking at it earlier, but let's just say Bari is it competing. Rummel? No, no, Bari no. is competing very well on this tour. This year, I wow. okay. Even though he's not on my team with P, uh, Planetary Pounders, Corey Rummel is overdue for a racing win. I think he's gotten second place finishes in racing more than anybody. He's gone to almost every single year. final round of racing. Yeah, and hasn't. I, I feel. How? Yeah, it's like his kryptonite. Like he went against Ryan Anderson final round in in this event. I think either last event it was Chucky Pockin lost in that round too. It's like he's overdue for a win. In racing, I'm, I'm just waiting for it. Even though it'd be nice if Jim could, you know, pick up the slack a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, oh, Jesus. let's Murphy. Let's just say, yeah, literally Murphy. Let's just say, Spence, I am not <laughs> upset at all that you did not accept my trade request the night of the draft because I am very happy with my picks this year. I'm very happy with Mr. <sighs> Corey Rummel going. Out I here. feel like I'm getting uh, screwed out of some points still. Like, I got two disadvantages oh. on me. Well, Coop, you had almost well, all of your drivers out this weekend. Or didn't yeah, that's, why, that's what I'm totally saying. I have a disadvantage. Yeah. Same. I mean, Adam was out, too. Yeah. Reagan with so the monster. All I had board. for stadiums was Jim Kohler. Thank that's you it. for yeah. this footage, Does anyone have man. Corey? Try to get yeah, a shot. Kohler for Corey. life. I'm starting to okay, call that's him runner-up Rummel. Ooh. <laughs> runner-up Rummel? Mm. Runner-up Rummel. That stings a little bit. 
Yeah, you know why he did that? Don't you even do it. Don't you say <laughs> it. Don't why, do it. Coop? Please. Don't do it. Tell us. No. Well, okay, since you asked, uh, the reason he's <laughs> not winning as much because he uh, kind of screwed us on this motor Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Grabbed Let the wrong go. magnum. Let it go. <laughs> Leave it alone, man. Give it a break. I, I mean, was until he asked. Corey has more points than Tom, so... Ooh. That's fair. <laughs> Tom has so been uh, I got, so driving a lot. We need, we need to talk about this. This has been a question that's been asked quite a bit in the comments by one person in particular, but we haven't addressed it. I feel like Monster Jam's new Super Glue uh, sponsorship is doing a terrible job because I have not seen a set of BKT stickers last an entire show on any that single truck. It's not glue. They're not glued on anymore. Really? How are they put on? What are they? What are they're, they like? They're stapling stuck. It to the it's, a, it's a sticky. Oh my god! It's a sticker. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a sticker, which actually, if you do it right, they actually do work. Because, obviously, every time I put mine on, they'd always stay on, you know? But, uh -huh. no, they don't use glue no more. Uh, and with that super glue sponsor, I've actually never seen the glue, ever. Ever <laughs> working there, never seen that glue. So, uh, it's, it's really whatever I go buy at Walmart. But, yeah, no, the BKTs are stickers. Y'all, we are going to be Fun getting fact. to... The biggest boss in all the monster trucks here in just a moment, but we're going to go ahead and get the arena results out of the way from this past weekend. Harley, I believe you have all those over um, there. Yeah, we only had two arena tours happen this weekend. Um, Weston took home two overalls in Washington, D.C., and Armando swept the, shirt, the third show and won his first overall, I believe, of the season. Um, and then Kristen won one overall, and Elvis won one overall in the Arena Central Tour as well. And before I forget, get this shirt at thethrottleoutshow.com. I am loving the way this baby turned out. Um, and then I guess another thing we need to talk about is our fantasy points. If you can kind of update us okay. on the fantasy world of monster uh, trucks. So do we want to go last know. to first or first to last? Let's, let's, let's go last go. to first. Yeah, let's I, don't, I haven't let's seen let's it. find out who's in last place this week. Okay, with 958 total points, Coop is in last place. Oh! <laughs> Listen, disadvantage. Hey, we'll come back. We'll come back like the Bengals. The Bengals. Oh, We're going to go all the way. Uh, Bengals. All right, in third place, we have with 993 total points is Team PP. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Still. You've been in like third <sighs> place this entire time, haven't you? At least I'm consistent, <laughs> like my drivers. <laughs> Waiting for a little boost. Something. Don't worry. Anyway. Next week, I'm coming back. <laughs> he sounded like Tom just did. He did. <laughs> and then in second place, with 1,035 points, sits me in second place. So I came back up from last place. Making a comeback. So, and Some of course, in first back. place, we have this guy with 1,123 total points. Go Leapers. Huh. It's ridiculous how many points you have. So that's a four week. I, I've just four weeks. I've stayed at first place. Yeah. Huh. Lucky you. A consistent Leduc Leapers. I love it. And then before we, I guess, move into our meat and potatoes for the evening, I don't. We don't have video footage from it, but a huge shout out to the Monster Chaos Tour team, Two Extreme. They had a crazy show this past weekend. I actually can't remember. It was somewhere up north, but they are selling seats and putting on good shows, man. We need to get a part of some two extreme shows. They they are doing a great job, and I'm proud of them. They've moved away from the monster, the world of Monster Jam. They're doing their own thing. They're making money, but they're also making fans super happy. They're doing, like I said, sold out arena shows and good shows at that. So, huge congrats and hats off to them. I hope they keep pulling that off. Sorry, Jimmy and Don, about your Chiefs this past weekend. We're very Ugh. upset over <laughs> here as well. Harley, that was hard to watch. Get them it was the guy wearing the, the Cowboys hat in the stands. He's the reason why they lost. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah. No, no, that, that guy's just lost in general in life. <laughs> all right. I, so no those, Cowboys. You don't know what we're talking like the about. There, there, there was a ding dong in the crowd. And I say a ding dong at the Chiefs game wearing a Chiefs hoodie and a damn Dallas Cowboys hat. He's this lost in lost. life, all right. Why they lost. We, we outcast him. All right. Listen, I'm just happy the Mahomes family is gone. <laughs> I I absolutely despised them, and oh if I had gosh. a chance, I would throw, I would buy an eight dollar hot dog from the stadium and throw it at them. <laughs> Just saying. 
so if if I guess we'll go on a little bit of a tangent here with football, just because the Super Bowl is so close, and I'm not going to be a part of the show when Super Bowl happens. I am very torn as to which team to root for, and the reason being, Yo, it's cool same. seeing that the Bengals are in the playoffs. The Bengals have they've always been an up and down mid type of team, but as of lately, they've been killing it. So it's super cool to see an Ohio team that's not OSU. In a championship setting, which Word. is awesome. Usually, their their pro teams are just garbage, so they have to root for the the Buckeyes. You know, I'm sorry if you're from Ohio, but you know this is true. Not to mention, I know more people from Ohio that are Pittsburgh Steelers fans than are Bengals or Cleveland Browns fans. In the other sense, with the L.A. Rams, I know Tweedy's not a big fan because the because the Rams left St. Louis to go to Los Angeles. And I'm indifferent of it because our former quarterback that literally left a year ago from the Detroit Lions is on the L.A. Rams going to his first Super Bowl. Imagine being on a team for 13 seasons, not getting anywhere in your career, leave leave to go to another team for one season and immediately in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, so, uh, I honestly want to see the Bengals win it uh, just because they got rid of the Mahomes and uh, – there's been a lot of memes about it, so I'm actually picking that team because of the, the memes. Because but no, me memes. and Tyler did predict the uh, the games of that day. It was pretty crazy. And from here on out, for the rest of this, I mean, until after the Super Bowl, if you're going to talk about the Bengals, you have to pronounce it like just that, the Bengals. With the a Bengals? Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals. Like Bengals. Bengals. Yeah. Also, to the guy who Everything said, bagels? let's go Eagles, um, didn't even see you in the playoffs, so uh, <laughs> shut your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's okay, it. Okay. Okay. Football rant over. For our guest who is in the back right now, can you hear me? If you can hear me, wave so I know that you are you're good yep, to rock and roll there. back there. I think he just gave me the John Cena. You can't see me back there. Yeah, I know he's pumped to come on and hang out with us. Peacemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the man we have all been desperately waiting to hear from since last Thursday when the news that shocked the monster truck world to its core that Schaefer Motorsports has finally been purchased. Ladies and gentlemen, returning to our show, the one and only Mr. James Trentino. <coughs> oh boy. He looks like he's a CEO. Why do you of the do Chiefs. that? I'm nothing special. <laughs> Just the next guy. James, what's going on, man? We're glad that you're here <clears throat> with us. What's going on, guys and gals? And uh, we're glad that you're here with us, man. And there may be a little bit of a delay here. It'll work itself through here. Don't worry. But James, first and foremost, congratulations on the big purchase. This is something that a lot of diehard Monster Truck fans have been waiting to see for a long time. So first and foremost, for anything else, congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, kind of a weird deal how it happened. Um, extremely excited for it. Obviously, there's a lot of things to work out. Um, why it happened to me or why it came at this time, I'm, I don't know. Um, but it's going to be a blast. I can tell you that much. So I want to go ahead and I want to hit you with a question right out of the gate, James. This has been something that uh, we, we've been getting a lot of these messages like, what's going to happen with the trucks? What are they going to be doing? Um, and I think we all kind of got some questions that we want to ask, but I'll just kind of get the conversation started is James, a lot of people are worried that these trucks that have been sitting for so long, um, with the world kind of being in the shape that it's in right now, there being the potential from these trucks to essentially just go from one storage unit to the next and <clears throat> not be doing any shows for a while. I mean, so kind of taking that question and just running with it. I mean, what's your plans with these trucks and your entire operation moving forward this year in 2022? Um, you know, right now we have three race trucks. Fourth one should be here soon. I'm working on number five and number six. Um, it just it depends on where and how soon we can get more race trucks and, and good drivers and good crew guys. Um, I'm not just going to throw anybody in that wants to drive or just going to go out there and, and destroy stuff. Um, we're looking for good people and honest people and hardworking people. Um, so our plan is, is some of the trucks are outdated. Some of them need quite a bit of work. And um, we'll probably sell a few of the chassis where we'll probably keep a few of the chassis. Um, like the Oz Monster has one night on it. Yeah, it's eight, nine years, 10 years old. It's brand new. Um, when it was 
back then, so it's been sitting for 10, 11 years, whatever it is. Um, so we might update that one and run that one. Um, we don't know yet, but no, I mean, they're not going to sit. We're going to use them, um, you know, especially if we have shows around here and, you know, use the name and the bodies and might put them on the chassis that we have. Um, we are in the works with a few other people to run a couple of the names potentially. And, you know, we want what's best for the sport. We're in the sport as a hobby. We're not in it um, to go out there and, you know, obviously we got to make a little bit of money to pay for the bills and pay for the crew and pay for the drivers. But I'm not in it to get rich. I'm in it for the hobby and the love of the sport. So we're going to do what's best. Now, Spence and Coop, y'all just go ahead and jump it. Matter of fact, Spence, I know you, you're you dying to talk over here, so I'll kind of flip it over to you real quick. <laughs> uh, um, honestly, man, I'm I'm just extremely stoked. Obviously, I'm repping my barefoot shirt tonight. I thought that was super cool when the announcement was made and everybody was worried about Team Phelps and you know what was going to happen with their operation. So do you kind of have like a game plan as far as like you know running – two monster patrols two barefoots or are you just going to kind of let the phelps crew kind of just run those names for the time being no i mean i've known the phelps since probably 2016 <clears throat> 17 when we had our big independent shows up here we got really got to know them they spent some time at our place in our shop and whatever um great great people um, they've never done anything wrong to me i could call them right now we could sit on the phone for an hour and bs and um, you know, my plan is, you know, they're out of Texas. We're out of Minnesota. Um, my my truck growing up was Monster Patrol, and, and that's my favorite truck. It always has been. Um, so they are running, obviously, Monster Patrol and like the original colored barefoot. Uh, you will see the red barefoot out soon. Um, I was hoping in the next two, three weeks that we'd have it out. I'm not sure if that's still going to happen or not, but we will have a, the Red Barefoot out soon. And Monster Patrol, I would like to run on a truck if I can find a, a great driver that can run it. And I won't say run it hard, hard, and destroy it every weekend, but I want somebody that will actually run it like Paul Schaefer did and Tom Mentz and have fun with the thing and uh, put that name back where it should be. Um, Love but the Phelps, well, the Phelps will run it. I mean, they're going to run there too. And we just, you know, if heck, what's the difference to me is if Monster Jam's running eight grave diggers across the United States right now, why can't we run two? True. Yeah. Fair enough. That's a good point. <laughs> I mean, they're good. They're good people to be representing your brand, anyways. Good, honest people. And uh, I mean, obviously, in a kind right. of a different part of the world as to where you're at, as well, anyways. Um, and kind of talking about other people you know running your identities coop i think you had a question you were going to bring up about identities what yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm lost Cooper's i'm not gonna lie. <laughs> 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 I, I don't Sorry, remember I that question <laughs> i was gonna ask if you already had uh drivers picked out or if there's gonna be auditions and all that stuff Joe no, Sylvester's in the don't. comments saying I, I mean, got a few open weekends. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Um, you know, truthfully, we're just, we have so much going on. So when we bought USA One, um, it was huge. And the people don't understand how much stuff we got with USA One. Unreal. I mean, if you've ever been to a shop, times it by two because you probably didn't know how much stuff was there because we didn't. Um, so we finally got it organized somewhat. We'll go to Paul Schaefer's and bring eight semi loads home again. And we're trying to do everything the best we can. We got barely tame, Master's a disaster. We're buying Zane Ripu stuff. And we just have so much going on. Um, as of right now, this coming weekend, uh, Mechanical Mischief with Josh driving. And it sounds like Logan Tweedy is going to be behind the seat of Barely Tame down in Topeka, Kansas this weekend um, for the Monster X Tour. So that'll be pretty awesome. We're pushing it a little hard to get there, to, to get things rolling. And I know you know it's kind of a little tricky right now with how much we got going on. But um, the, the trucks will hopefully will start rolling out full time here in the next week or two. And, and we'll keep building as we go. Um, as far as other people using our names, I mean, Paul Schaefer, I believe, is a pretty honest guy and a pretty smart businessman. I flew out down there. Um, a lot of people told me we're a lot alike. 
uh, business wise we, and we do he had a racetrack i own a racetrack he had a roll-off company i had a roll-off company he owns a trucking company i own a trucking slash towing company we had so much in common that when i flew down there uh, we spent eight out eight nine hours there just talking and by the end of the day um we had a deal on a handshake it was just crazy and i felt like i've known this guy for years and yeah, there was a post I seen the other day on Facebook and it made me happy that he realizes, you know, that the trucks are going to a good home. Will they be out tomorrow? No. Will they be out in a month? Probably not. It's going to take time. Um, we have a lot of plans and we're going to do the best we can, like I said, and do the best for the sport. On the other hand, we don't need people like Vern House that um, say they had a deal with Paul Schaefer and they didn't or they did via text. It's kind of a, a crappy situation as Paul Schaefer, I've asked him, no idea who Vern House is. Um, another guy had paperwork done already, a, a lease agreement um, to use the body and the name. And to me, that's, I'm going to honor everybody that had a paper agreement. Um, <clears throat> and I'm drawing a blank right now, I'm sorry, but Captain USA out in Washington. He's using the body. He's out in Washington. He has a clean truck. It's Jeff. Um, but he, um, he, um, he's done well with it, and he's presented it well. And to me, that's the kind of guy I want out there. Paul Schaefer's had him for how many years? I'm not going to sit and take that name away from that guy. We, if we want, we can run uh, U uh, Captain USA around here as well. Um, it's just frustrating because we've never done anything wrong. Last year, summertime, after he bought USA 1, a little bit of hype, whatever. Vern House was talking trash, talking trash about me, talking trash about USA 1. He says he doesn't remember it. I'm not going to sit and argue um, over the, um, the whole situation. Um, <clears throat> but for Vern, prime example, and this is he screwed a bunch of friends of mine in the years prior, probably four or five, and... We call down our mold. I bought the mold. It's our mold. It's our name. It's our trademark, everything else. And Vern House goes and tells GTS Fiberglass that, yeah, I bought this mold from Paul. It's my mold. It's my body. I own the name. I own the rights to it all. And, and Vern House is going to try and pick up the mold already. <laughs> so it's like, you know what? I, I, so many people, in my opinion, even Paul, tell you, you know, he won't go on the Internet and say it, but so many people have taken advantage of Paul and, and screwed Paul over in many years, and that's why he got sick of it. He truly did. He's just sick of people screwing him over, using the names without his permission. He didn't want to go and sit in court. He doesn't want to fight it. He doesn't. He's here. He had the love of the sport, and he's a busy businessman, and people are taking advantage of him, and that's going to come to a screeching halt with us. Um, you know, we will honor people that have a paper contract. People want to rent or lease or use our names. I'm, I'm all about it, as long as they represent well and they do a good job. Um, but I'm not going to let people run us over. I mean, I'm not afraid to, to go to court if I have to. I'm not afraid to stand up for what we invested in. Everybody had the right to go and invest in and spend their money and do exactly what we did. Um, but nobody did. We did. Um, is it wrong of me to stand our ground? I don't think so. But we're going to stand our ground. And I, a guy could come to me tomorrow and say, hey, I want to run the Oz Monster or I want to run Rampage. Hey, let's work on a deal. If you're a good driver and a good truck and it's a truck that we're not going to use in the next six months, let's do it. Let's get it out there. Let's have fun with this. Um, there was a lot of questions about Gary Porter. Is he going to be driving the Carolina Crusher truck? In the near <clears throat> uh, you know, that's been brought up with... Um, <laughs> Michael Harper, and as of right now, Michael Harper never had a contract on it. Michael Harper never had anything in agreement with uh, that set in stone with uh, Carolina Crusher. So until that happens, I, the answer right now is no. Uh, my attorney has all the paperwork. My attorney has everything from Paul Schaefer, and he lawyer. reviews every every contract that um, that we're going to send out to people. Uh, the Phelps are all on contracts, and they just rev my attorney reviews it. We move forward. So, if there is not a contract in place and a pa piece of paper, uh, no, nobody will be running our names. I like that. <clears throat> 
Tweety, you're quiet. Holy crap. <laughs> I, I don't know what just happened with my voice just then. I went to talk and nothing came out. Um, but, but I like that, though. I, I like keeping it safe, getting people who can represent the brand well. Um, so you're look, So one of the other questions that was brought up is when you go and you eventually start bringing back, like, the Barefoot and the Moss Patrol, I mean, can you kind of give us a sneak peek at the, what these trucks may possibly look like? Are you wanting to stick to the old school design? Are you want to go and, and modernize the designs completely? You know, I'm, I need your thoughts on that. I, I truthfully, I, I'm torn up. Um, I have a brand new body sitting here. That's a early 90s Chev. And we have some ideas on what to do. And, and I bought that body before we bought Monster Patrol. And now I'm thinking, it's like, well, do I want to put Monster Patrol in it? Or do I want to put Monster Patrol in a brand new body? I like old school. I'm, I think it's, they're awesome. I personally don't like the 2015 Chevy bodies because everybody runs them. Mm -hmm. They're cheap. They're reasonable, whatever you want to call them. But it just seems like there's so many of that body style out there. And yeah. I would rather have the old school look to them, honestly. If you're asking me personally, I think it would be sick to see the newer style chassis, obviously all the recent, the latest and greatest technology, but with the old school bodies and those trucks go out there and they compete well just like they used to. That, that's kind of where I'm at, Spence. You may have a different opinion on that. I, okay, so I'm not going to lie, James. When you put that 88 Chevy body for USA 1 on the modern chassis, that had an entirely, like, it was such an aggressive look. I love the way that truck sat. However, I l also really like seeing more modern bodies kind of come into fruition because there's been a lot of people that have, you know, there, there's like trends in monster trucks. Like for a while, Bigfoot started this way back when, when everybody had the, the trophy truck body. The next thing you know, everybody was running a square body or some kind of an old school Chevy. <clears throat> and now there's not really a lot of people running a brand new style um pickup truck body and one of those bodies ran i believe paul shaver had a sponsorship or partnership with dodge with the penda series so i think it'd be cool if you got a modern dodge body for both barefoot and monster patrol um like the same bodies that uh, raisin cane runs but keep that old school-esque paint design but just kind of bring it to a more modern era sure and it's possible i mean it's um like I said, we, we don't, we're not 100% set in stone on what we're going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Here's here's another question. Um, I'm glad you brought this up, Chris Baluk. So now you've got, obviously, arguably, like the most famous names in all of Monster Trucks added to your arsenal up there, okay? You are, and this is obviously no pun intended, just because you bought the camp, but, like, you are, like, right as of right now, you are, like, the modern-day Paul Schaefer. So with that being said, Paul Schaefer used to run his own tours in the early to the mid 2000s um you know he had plenty of trucks plenty of good uh, uh, drivers in order to make that happen drivers and crew guys is that something you're entertaining the idea of going out and run your own tours potentially i don't know i mean there's there's obviously money to be made in it if you want to look at the money side of things it's a ton of work i mean the independent shows that we did up here um what were a ton of work we have a heck of a crew started already, obviously, with, you know, the drivers with Rodney and Logan and, and Cameron's been awesome, and they've all busted their tail. Um, you know, we have um, Josh Baumgartner up here on his Mechanical Mischief. He's been our leader, and uh, my cousin's picking up. He's been running my roll-off company for me, and he flew or went out and got all this stuff, and and he's been helping this week. And, you know, we just, we honestly don't, and Mike Rowley, I mean, he's tearing trucks apart and putting them together and fixing them, and he's going to get in the seat here soon. And we're just trying to build a team, and we're kind of taking our time on getting some stuff rolling. We're not 100%. Right now, we'll run at our racetrack that I own. We'll run our trucks at. Uh, we have a couple areas and arenas and stuff that we're going to ponder this year and see if we can a couple shows locally. As far as going out and doing our own shows, if I had to say right now what is the answer in the next year, I'd say no. Um, if everything gets up and going and, and we want to go and run a few shows here and there, a year from now, uh, two years from now, maybe. It just depends what life is like. Um, I'm busier than busy with, with the companies we own and everything going on, so I can't be gone, and especially weeks at a time. So you need great people and great crew that you can trust. Again, we're in it for fun. Um, I'm not in it for money, so we're going to go out and run with these guys and 
a lot of promoters have been contacting us and, and want two trucks. Um, we had a promoter yesterday or today uh, wanted to, um, they want four of trucks or six of the old bodies or names and four of our trucks and maybe two of somebody else's trucks with our bodies on it um, to run their events and bring back this old school stuff. So we'll see. I mean, it's we'll see what happens. I'm going to kind of backtrack just a little bit. We're getting great into conversation here. James, how did all this come to be? Because when I looked at your post last week and you were saying, like, you know, this really wasn't on your radar. This wasn't in your plans to go out and buy out the Schaefer operation. How did all this kind of come to be? How did you get in on the ground level of this? And I'm asking this, James, because there's been a lot of guys out there trying to buy out Schaefer's team for years now. And you just happen to be the guy to actually to, to clock the ticket and make it happen. Where did all this come from? Um, <clears throat> honestly, it's just I've known about it for a couple of years. Um, personally, never really thought it was in reach. Um, didn't know what I would do with them. Didn't know what I should do. And then there's some people that were interested in buying it, and I and I'm a, a man of my word, and that's how I am. If if I say something, it's usually it's gold, you know, it's, we're going to do it. And, and these guys I've respected a shit ton in, in the, uh, monster truck industry, and I'm not going to step on them. And then I heard it again. And some people are like, just go talk to them, just go talk to them. And I'm like, I, I'm not, cause somebody else is interested in it. So then I waited and waited, waited and about a month or so went by. And I'm just like, Hey, what, what are you thinking? Cause I heard some other people are interested in it. And I'd really, you know, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And I don't want to lose this opportunity. And like no you know what this is this is all right this is what i'd like to see happen if you do it let's go down there so a week later I, a friend of mine has a private plane and hopped on the plane and flew down there and talked to him and like i said it was eight nine hours you know we went out to lunch and went back to the shop and looked at everything again for about the fourth time and sat in his office for about two hours and looked at everything and made a handshake agreement i told him i'd have money within two weeks um and it was a done deal. So it's crazy. It's crazy how it all happened. It's crazy how fast it happened. But, you know, we sent a crew down there last week, some guys earlier in the week, and the rest of the guys went down and showed up Wednesday, Thursday. And um, I think we sent home six trucks Thursday, and the other two came home on Friday with everything else. So it's all sitting back at our shop in Minnesota, and it was pretty awesome. Harley, see if those videos will play from last week. Can you can you make it happen? Yeah. See if it'll play. So, James, I'll play these videos for a little bit, and you just kind of talk about this day. I mean, what kind of prep work went into this? Because I didn't realize that y'all were going to make this happen in one day. Go down there, drive to basically the other side of Chicago, and make all this happen. I mean, that had to have been absolutely bonkers. Well, you know, we – it's our – one of our specialties is heavy equipment transport. You know, we haul – big uh iron around the midwest to texas whatever and it's kind of slow this time of year with how cold it is and we asked a bunch of our guys if they wanted to go down there and of course everybody's like heck yeah we're going you know so i put a plan together and when we flew down there josh and i made a list of what we felt we needed for van trailers and what we could put on open trailers at our landalls that have winches and we just wrote it out on paper and and um went with it and everything worked out well and yeah i don't know i see that there's some guys asking about mud patrol um mud patrol will be cleaned up wax polished um and sit in our showroom floor at our shop very nice he said this chassis so right here is basically a brand new chassis for the most part that's brand new it's got one night on it that engine's brand everything's brand new front to back top to bottom What's with the support bars? That's that's what I'm trying to figure out. The support bars on the They bottom. built it as a rollover truck. I knew it! So I knew it. You could roll it over as their plan without um, without uh, destroying the body. Huh. I swore up and down that was the rollover truck. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was it. So, so yeah, our showroom floor, 
a lot of people have asked um our building 17,000 square feet we thought it was enough room it's not a lot of room anymore <laughs> um um the showroom floor is it's okay it's not huge we'll get the original uh usa one at the 1970 on its big tires uh mud patrol will be in there we'll have a little area to play video games you know the moss truck video games um we'll have display cases for the toys we have you know we'll have shirts we'll have hats and and even though the trucks aren't out there yet, we still plan on doing some merch and stuff and doing what we can for the trucks and the names that we bought. Um, like I said, the truck names and the bodies, and they'll be out running on, on somebody's chassis, hopefully sooner than later. Um, and then we'll have as many chassis or, that we can buy or get built. I've been on the phone um, between PEI and Kuan and... Uh, um, the metal shop and you know we've been on this last couple days has just been phone calls and emails and seeing what we can do and what the lead time is on new trucks and and we've been talking to a few people out of some used trucks for sale and no i'm not going to go buy 10 trucks and have them all on the road this year no it's not going to happen but uh we're going to do our best to get as many as we can i would say by the end of the year if i had five or six i'd be extremely happy that would be awesome i would make a lot of fans happy we're going to play the second part of that video, Harley, if you want to get that rolling. And James, correct me if I'm wrong, you're still looking for some good people to come up there, get these trucks rolling, get them race ready, and get this thing happening, man. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you're still looking for good people. Oh, for sure we are. Um, I love it. I didn't even know they took that video. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <myself>. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we are. I mean, you like, even – a lot of these guys that were down here and helping and whatever, they didn't know each other and they were a team and that's what we're all about. That's what we, I have 140 employees at just a towing company and everybody's a team player. Obviously you have your bad days and you're crabby with each other here and there, but for crying out loud, you're with each other more than you are with your family. And <clears throat> every one of my guys busted their tail. Um, my sister came down there, took some pictures and video and she was the one that was videoing me when I got there and broke the news and um, great friends of ours at rock on trucks out of weight park they they helped us with the enclosed trailers and um you know every, all of this was a challenge i mean none of these trucks started um we didn't try to start them with how long they sit we want to tear the engines apart get everything going none of them you know steered obviously it's all hydraulic and all the batteries were dead and everything everything was a challenge and i think it was like 12 degrees outside um so it was a long day but everybody kicked butt yeah, I imagine it was it was a lot of hard work and put in by the team that was uh and be, being damn twelve degrees out there, I know. That was a good time. <laughs> um, Spence, what are you thinking, my man? Honestly, man, it's like nineteen ninety five all over again just in one video. It's it's so surreal. It's it's so yeah, cool seeing all those yet. old school names. I I was born in ninety five, but I still watched a bunch of stuff from ninety five. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> talking about um you know all the names and everything so when we first made the uh, when we did our last stream where you made the announcement we were talking a little bit more about you know your endeavors and everything uh tough uh no limits monster truck said that i think barely tame and usa one will be at a show in billings montana is that the official debut of the brand new usa one <clears throat> you know i don't know why they release that you know we talked a little bit about it um, I don't have any paperwork on it. I emailed them the other day and I just said, you guys, we're, we're running behind. I mean, we had parts on order that were supposed to be here. FedEx said they'd be here Friday. I'm like, all right, they'll be here Monday. Today's Monday and we still don't have the parts. Um, it's just mm -hmm. like, that's at the mercy that we're at right now. Um, USA one is being built from the ground up refurbished chassis, but everything else is, you know, they're gone through or rebuilt or new and, and I'm not going to do it half-ass. Um, the, the body sitting there done. The the chassis is getting picked up, I believe, tomorrow. Um, but we're waiting on a lot of other components that we can't go unless we get these components in and in a timely fashion because to do it right, they'd have to leave like next Tuesday. Yeah. And the truck's not even put together. So I emailed Ed and I said, Ed, I'm sorry. I said, you know, we I told you it was going to be a stretch to even make it there. Um, I just, this is what I was afraid of. And this is why I just said, you know, it would be a tough push. Um, mm -hmm. so I would say right now, no, we, we can't, I mean, we don't have the parts we need. We don't have 
and it's not my fault. I mean, we, like I said, the chassis will be back tomorrow and we can put it back together in a couple days. And, every, you know, the other three trucks are pretty, or other two trucks are pretty much ready to go. Um, just some final touches. We were going through them today and found some issues and they'll be fixed hopefully by tomorrow and um, stuff like that. But we have so much to do. It's crazy. You walk in that shop and think, <laughs> what in the world? If you're watching this video right now and you like what's going on, like the damn video, would you? Like the video! <laughs> subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A lot of y'all ain't subscribed for some reason watching our videos, which doesn't help us out at all. Doesn't help us get good people on a show like James and his camp. James, since you already got the, <clears throat> the Schaefer Motorsports, you got Team USA 1, you got Barely Tame Master of Disaster. I mean, you don't have to necessarily go into plans and, and talk about... Um, you know, names per se, but I mean, is there still potential for you to add some names to the fleet at some point? Oh, for sure. We have, like I said, we have big plans. Um, we're not done. Uh, we have oh, no. some crazy people that have reached out. Not crazy people. I should, it was crazy on who's <laughs> reached out to us in the last two weeks. Let's put it that way. Um, very unexpected. Um, we have some some toy deals that are in the talks already um we have some big names in the talks already um if it's us not buying them it's teaming up with them um there's just so much going on i'm not lying my phone is blowing up from fans um my phone has blown up from people that want to sponsor um they want different they you know toy deals or i don't know there's so much stuff going on right now it's like I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> Tweety, I do have a question for you, bud. Fire away. Since uh, I've got my notepad and everything right here, how many flags and stickers do we need to start cranking out for Mr. Trantino here? We, we need a bunch. <laughs> a bunch. Let's just say a that. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Hey, this was in the comment section I saw a while ago, but uh, one of the questions was, uh, was uh, what was it? Uh, any plans with the the TNT unfinished business type of deal, or will you be too busy still before that even starts? You know, and I don't know. I mean, we Michael Harper contacted me three three four weeks ago and asked about USA One, and I I don't know what we're gonna do with it. I don't know. You know, he had we haven't talked since then, and I don't know his whole plan about that whole show. Obviously, he's pretty quiet about it, which which is pretty awesome. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. Um, I know there's some people that are going out there for free and doing it for the love of the sport and doing it um, because it's called TNT Unfinished Business and nostalgic and, you know, going back to the early 90s. That's crazy. It's awesome. It's cool. Um, my thing is, is I don't know that I'm going to go out there. I don't know that I'm... To me, if it was at the Hall of Fame and it was raising money for the Hall of Fame and the money's going to a good cause and, you know, we're doing this for the monster truck world, I'd be all for it. Now, you have a guy that is going out there and selling tickets and a lot of people are buying them and he's going to make $100,000, $200,000 off this deal but doesn't want to pay for anybody's fuel, doesn't want to pay for stuff. I am, hate me or like me, I mean... Why should I pay for that expense when somebody's making money on it? That's a good point. If, <clears throat> if the Monster Truck oh, Hall of Fame snap. called me tomorrow and said, James, I want 12 of your trucks out there. All this money is going for the Hall of Fame. All this truck is going for the industry, or this money is going for the industry. We want to build a new building. I know they just moved, but I'm just using an example. And we want to do this or we want to do that. Every single one of them trucks would be on a trailer and be heading to the Hall of Fame. One Everybody problem. tag Jeff Cook right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way I am. I do it in the towing world, too. We go to the towing uh, tow, um, museum and Hall of Fame in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I mean, I'll, I'll spend money on it. Um, you know, it's it's for the industry. It's it's what we do and whatever. But I have a hard pr – I'd be like me calling every independent and saying, hey, guys, we're having the largest independent show again up here in Minnesota, we're going to do 30 trucks. We're going to, it's going to kick ass. And I'm going to charge everybody in the crowd 30 bucks a piece to come and see this. And you guys don't get nothing. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, there's been plenty of guys that try to do that, man. And, uh, 
I mean, you, you hate to see it, and it it's actually it's hard to explain that to fans. It's hard to, to explain that. I mean, this goes hand in hand with anything, not just sponsor trucks, uh, pr- professional wrestling, anything professional sports related. You get a lot of people like, oh, this is this is for the sport. It's for that. And at the end of the day, some guy just sitting on a big wad of cash. It's yeah. going in his back pocket. There's a lot of people breaking their backs, um, getting their crew together, uh, everything they have, their arsenal ready for something. And it's just, I mean, I get it. You're you're not uh, you're not breaking my heart over here. Let's just say that much. So, uh, I mean, I get that. <laughs> Respect that. I like these questions coming down here in the comment section. Keep it up, y'all. Keep it up. We got just a few more minutes left. Um, James, mm-hmm. I, now I, I, I'm going to throw you a, an odd question out here. Out of the trucks that you had just purchased, not the ones you already have, the ones you just purchased, which one would you say that is your favorite, the one that you lean towards the most, one that is in your heart? And number one, what's your favorite truck? Monster Patrol. Mm, Let's go! They didn't even take us. They even take a chance to even think no, about it. Just. You already knew it. <laughs> <clears throat> no, that that's my favorite truck. Um, you know, when I grew up and, uh, you know, 1993 when he debuted, it was I was eight years old. Um, and that was a truck. It was obviously the lights get you and, you know, Monster Patrol. And, and I'm, I guess I have always been in a lot of my family, and I shouldn't say a lot, a few of my family members are in law enforcement and, I back law enforcement, obviously, in the towing industry. We do a lot with law enforcement. I think lights are cool. All of our tow trucks are pretty awesome. And and um, it's just ever since then, that's been my truck. I mean, Grave Digger is Grave Digger. Um, nothing against <laughs> them or the name or the Andersons, but it was always Monster Patrol went out there and said, hell with it. And even you go on YouTube and there's – or Google or YouTube and – there's a video on there of him in 1993. It's like 45 minutes long, and, and it recaps his whole season. It's just awesome. It's like he wants to beat Grave Digger. He's coming out there to make a point, and this is it, and whatever. And that's that's just fun to me, and that's what I remember. I mean, everywhere we went, that's what I remember. Now, we have a couple questions, or the same question from a couple people, about what's ha- what's going to happen with Outback Thunder. So that's kind of a goofy deal. Um we were going to buy it. It was on the purchase agreement. Um, Paul couldn't get a hold of the gentleman that owned it across seas. Paul has a right to it here in the United States. It wasn't a name that I was too concerned about. Um, I have an agreement that I can use it at any time I want. I actually will be um, my rights um, for like the odd game on your phone and whatever. Um, we can do whatever we want with it. It's just the guy doesn't we couldn't get a hold of him in time. Like I said, this deal happened so dang fast. So right. to get everything to him and back to us and whatever, it's not out of the picture yet uh, that you know we'll own it here in the United States. It's just right now we took it out of the purchase agreement. That way there, there's no dirty laundry and it's done. It's cut and dry. I wasn't worried about it. Um, <clears throat> but again, we'll have the rights to it. We, hey, we can do whatever we want with it in the United States. Uh, we got that word from him the other day. Actually, I think it was Friday. It was a day after I left and, and did this deal. And um, he's he's just, he, they know Paul, and they have that relationship. He doesn't know who I am. And he's like, well, that Paul, for right now, let's just do this. He can do whatever he wants with it. Um, and we'll just go from there. You ever have kangaroo jerky? Sorry, go What's ahead. What's that? Go no, go ahead. Somebody else go ahead. <clears throat> I was just asking, this is completely <coughs> random, since we're talking about Australia. Um, have you ever had kangaroo jerky? <laughs> oh, I have. It's awful. No. No. What? Oh. You didn't like it? <laughs> awful. Bro. It's awful. That is. I that see is people really asking about good. Boogie Van. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah. what I was I Boogie Van. Boogie Van, um... <laughs> Monster Jam, obviously, they're making toys with it. They have a contract and whatever with it. So uh, when Monster Jam's done with it or their contract is up, oh, yeah, we got a mold for, we got a mold for like, a 1995 Aerostar Ford van. You bet. <laughs> that baby will be back on the tour. Yeah. Oh, that's so – oh, that's awesome to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, to. but that – Why not? Aer- Aerostar – yeah, it's like Aerostars. I mean, nobody like as the actual van itself. Aerostars were garbage vans. They were they're were horrible. <laughs> right. They leaked like a sieve. They're terrible. But seeing it on a monster truck is a whole other deal. Like it's 
I love it. I'm so excited to hear that you guys have that body still. James, if you were oh, looking awesome. for a female driver for Boogie Van, I've got the perfect one for you. Her name is Cameron Tweedy. She will be a great fit. <laughs> for <Boogie Van. laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He'll wear a wig. Uh, we'll make him do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we oh, actually we man. have a couple we have a couple other females that are interviewing and or talking to as well. So one of them used to run Monster Jam. Um, the other Ooh. one used to run Bigfoot. So we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, my biggest thing is I want people up here. I mean, a lot of people yeah. don't want to move. I get it. I I totally get it. Um, <clears throat> and and the, the, your your dad and brothers didn't move the Tweeties. I mean, they're up here. Um, living in a luxurious cabin on a lake right now and enjoying life, but they're busting their tail. I mean, they're working 12, 13, 14 hours a day and, and they get it. And I, re, you know, appreciate the heck out of it. But my issue is, is you go out and you're running these shows and you want to go back home and then we have nobody to help work on the trucks. And then, and then something happens at home or you can't come back and we already committed to these shows and you know it puts a guy in a bind where hey sure. if i'm out and like i said our towing company it you flip a switch we have seven semi rollovers and every truck a rotator crew i have is out cleaning up the freeway and highways i can't necessarily promise that my crew is going to be there to help all the time i want guys such as the tweeties and josh and mike roley and they're willing, you know what, this is going to be badass. They know what my plan is. They know what my hopes and dreams are. And, and to make that happen, we all need to do it together. We all have the same. Um, um, I, Josh just says, sends me a text. We're still working. It's okay. They've been there like 13 and a half hours today working on this truck. Got it, Josh. Thanks. So, um, but that's why I want people. I feel that if these guys are here doing what they're doing and doing what they love, that everybody else on our team should be there right along with them. I don't think it's fair that I want to come and drive your truck. And that's obviously we need a fill in driver and we fly them in or do whatever. But a full time person just to come in and drive and then they they go back home again I, it's hard for me to swallow i don't, I don't agree with it well, spence coop harley we are running at the hour mark right where we normally cut off and we could go on forever with this conversation this is typically some thursday night let's, conversation. let's keep going what else what else do you want to talk about it's only 8 30. yeah so i mean go ahead, go ahead. i'll keep going i'm, go. I'm totally fine with keep <laughs> to go. keep going to be Roll, honest baby. <laughs> I, the, the biggest thing that I love most about this team and your whole drive with this, James, is the simple fact that you're doing it for the love of the sport. You know, you're not you are a very successful businessman, but knowing that this to you is just a hobby, like the equivalent of somebody just playing with toy cars, but you get to play with full blown monster trucks. It's absolutely awesome. So if you ever want to see your trucks in a full blown simulation, uh, I'll get a hold of my boys at B Monsters, and we'll try to get Triple B Motorsports in the game for you. Because after this has been announced, they've been asking nonstop about all your trucks with Monster Patrol, uh, Wild Thing. I mean, and it's when it comes to having an actual monster truck simulation. I mean, this is top tier. So if you want it, I'll, I'm willing to hook you up. <laughs> well, let me know. I mean, why not, right? <clears throat> you know, like I said, it's all. It's all um, for the love of the sport. I mean, obviously, we have to pay bills. We have to go out there and and do it just like everybody else does. I mean, everybody's got a living to make, too. And, and our guys, you know, we offer good pay. I mean, so if you're listening and if you know somebody and you're a good driver, we offer good pay, uh, health insurance, dental insurance, paid time off. Um, you know, we're a legit deal. Um and we just, like I said, I, I don't expect everybody to go out there and destroy their trucks every weekend. I don't expect them to do backflips. It's like, hey, let's have fun. And and we have a lot of racetracks around the area that are pretty easy deals. And you might you might be on the road for three, four weeks. You might be home every weekend. We don't know, or every week. We don't know where we're, where it's bringing us right now. But um, again, it's just it's 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 going to be fun. I think. Speaking of which, you know, speaking of racing and everything, what does your Roundy Round team think about the Monster Truck operation? Are they going to get to play with uh, the monsters at all, or they just get to sit and play with the uh, the little dirt track cars? 
Roundy round. Coming from a guy that freaking really? Really? Coming from you on a guy that goes in a straight line. Roundy round. <sighs> Dude, why are you even on this show anymore? Oh! <laughs> Finally, somebody <No>. else! <laughs> so anyways. No, we were there today. Um, we have we have a race shop too, race team shop, and we, we were messing around in that a little bit this afternoon, and and uh, he hopped in with me, and we went to the monster truck shop and kind of showed him around, and he thinks it's cool. He he's a engineer and super smart guy, and very good at racing and loves what he does, and he thinks it's awesome, you know. But you got a guy that thinks racing's awesome, and he he's never driven a monster truck. Will he ever drive one? Who knows? Maybe. But he's so busy with racing. They race 60, 70 times a year. It's it's unre- unreal. So, um, But it's the race shop is in one area, and six miles, seven miles away is the monster truck shop. So it's not like they're in the same garage by any means. I uh, mean, I think I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'm I'm just I'm just busting busting your balls a little bit with the rounding round stuff. Just I, I get I get <laughs> I slack know, a lot I from know. my friend uh, Mike Gromick, who works with uh, <laughs> <laughs> who works with Jimmy Creighton, uh, giving me the same slack for drag racing. But I mean, motorsports is motorsports. Whether it's fifteen hundred horsepower, five I don't know what your dirt track cars typically run at five hundred. Are they big block modifieds or small blocks? I I honestly don't really know all that much. They're small blocks. <laughs> Yeah. Small blocks. They're small blocks. Got it. Yep. James, I got a question for you. I asked you this before the show. I don't think we've talked about it yet this stream, but with the purchase of these trucks, I mean, you got, I mean, the, the cream of the crop here. Well, I mean, the cream of the crop, I guess, in the late 90s and the early 2000s with these trucks. But, I mean, these are the actual real deal Hemis that came out of these trucks. Were these dry block Hemis? Yeah, they're dry block Hemis. And, <clears throat> um, you know, and everybody's asking, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with the engines? What are you going to do with the trannies? And, and truthfully, we have w- one person that's interested in buying three or four of them at one crack. And, you know, they are outdated. Um, I want to keep a couple that, to me and probably Paul, mean a lot. Um, a couple of them do have Chevy engines in them, and they're not as old, like I said. But, um, you know, we don't know. I mean, do we update some of them, or do we just – sell a couple of all, a couple of them and, and buy new chassis and, and up to date safety wise and up to date light wise and so on and so forth there's just we don't know i mean it, it just happened so there's a lot to figure out yet harley you want to help me out everyone's trying to replace me with your sister i mean <laughs> hey listen i've been in your shoes before i mean i don't know Listen, I've been there. I know what you're going through. At least, uh, I, apparently, I bring nothing to the show. So, you know I, mean. I don't know who commented that, but the yeah, comments gone from that stream. I felt so bad him. for you, Coop. No, nah, it's fine. It's fine. I I agreed with him. I was like, yeah, I know, right? And he never replied. <laughs> Crazy. He may have, he may have uh, somebody was saying, who do we dream of working with promoter wise? All these trucks. We don't really have a plan. Um, we want to work with good promoters, fair promoters, and promoters that understand the business. And when I say that wise, I say expense wise. I'm not going to f- drive to New York for $3,000 from Minnesota. You're crazy. Um, right. Again, I'm not doing it for the money, but let's think about that and the fuel costs and hotel costs and driver's wage and so on and so forth. Um we like i said we have a ton of promoters that are reaching out and we're beyond excited to work with them and um you know it depends how many trucks we have we might be two trucks with five different promoters next year by the time by this time next year or heck we might we were approached yesterday and asked if we would run four trucks with the same promoter um for most of their shows and i was pretty excited because it's a pretty good promoter so We'll see what happens. Damn. Now, what's I mean, the plans for? I mean, you you're trying to get a good crew going, and I think you'll you obviously get there before too much longer. But I mean, I want to know when when are you? When is the boss going to get behind the wheel of old Monster Patrol? Show everybody how it's done. <clears throat> I want to know when you're going to get in the seat. Show you how it's done. I've never done a backflip, so that's out. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm truthfully, I enjoy it. 
Um, I'm not going to sit and say that I'm the best at it. I'm not going to sit and say I know everything about driving. I have way too much to learn. Um, I'll run. I'll run local shows. Um, I'm waiting to hear if Logan's going to run next weekend in Lacrosse, Wisconsin, for Monster X. Um, if not, I think I might climb in the truck maybe and and run barely tame down there. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I have been keeping my eye open for my a personal truck of my own, so I can be a filler and I can go and run a single show here and there. Or, um, there's a couple events that are booked for USA One right now for a one truck deal, and I don't want to split up the two truck team if they have to. You know, they have a good show going somewhere or whatever, and that would be my opportunity to throw my truck in and go and run with the boys and just spend time with them. I I truly enjoy it, and everybody that's working with us so far, I enjoy quite a bit. I they, a lot of them have positive attitude, and um, it's just it's fun. You seriously you walk in the monster truck shop, and yeah, I don't care how dirty they are, we have a lot of fun yet. So give a lot of of each other shit, and and that's the way I like it. So if I can throw my truck in a trailer and go play with the boys one weekend and just BS with them and have a good weekend with them, that would mean more to me than anything. We kind of hinted at this the last time we were talking about your camp, but uh, let's talk about Mike Riley for a second. Let's brag on him for a little bit. We did that last week, and James, we were Mike talking Riley. about him because— What we a weird were, guy. We, <laughs> we, we were talking about, James, uh, a lot of the crew from Monster Jam, obviously guys like Spence and Cooper who are included in this, good guys that work for Monster Jam that got released due to the COVID stuff, and then when everything came back around and they started mandating stuff and they just watched good people like Cooper and Mike Riley just walk right out the door. Watched them march. And now, James, I'm hoping you're starting to get a lot of the overflow from that. A lot of the people that have left that company headed up to y'all's camp. But, I mean, good guys like Mike Riley are hard to come by. They are. I mean, the guy is super smart. Um, you know, he. I got to give him credit. I mean, he tore down – the other truck and he's got everything in the shape and um he's been there and you know he's lives three hours away three three and a half whatever it is and didn't really have a a place to live here in town and he's done a lot for us he's committed to it um he gave uh took a chance on me and and i took a chance on him and you know i, I really want to see him you know right now a lot of the stuff and is in these small stadiums um and um he, uh, I want, I want to see him in the seat. That, that was our agreement. And I'm just waiting for a little bit outside events. A lot of these promoters don't want these rookies or guys that haven't really driven a truck in the indoor event. So he's going to have his time behind the seat. And I wish some more of these guys that are good and, and good at what they do, um, and respectful as he is and, and, and get stuff done, approach us and, you know, work with us. I think that's, it's their start honestly obviously we have some guy we need positions filled that are experienced drivers too but i'm not afraid to put an experienced driver with a aka rookie driver and pair them up in a truck and trailer together yeah. and go have fun I and mean, that's what it's all about <clears throat> well i got a couple of really good friends of mine that are going to unoh to major in automotive high performance but they don't want to go to monster jam but their loyalty is with independence and they would want nothing more but to come work for you. Obviously, they're, they'd be fresh and green. You know, they they know a little bit about like tiring down trucks. But honestly, if, when it comes to an independent promoter, um, you know, that would be a great place to look at for you know up and coming technicians that want to get into the field and go into a team that would absolutely take care of them. Right, and that's and that's just it. That's who you know. We're open. I mean, and honestly, the biggest thing is, and I know it that nowadays it's hard to make a living and no matter what industry you're in no matter what job you're in um let alone you guys know firsthand um mm -hmm. being a crew chief on a monster truck can suck especially when your driver <laughs> tears it apart burns it down <laughs> and you're working 24 hours a day it's not the best thing in the world you know so I'll, i've had a couple of guys like oh yeah yeah we'll do it and i you know my trucks i've had for years prior and Next thing you know, it's like, what are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? What we don't? What are you doing, Coop? <laughs> Why did I need to see no. this right now? I'm just chilling in my love sack, my guy. <laughs> First of all, why so is it anyways, called love sack? And two, are you wearing pants? I mean, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, please don't do that. There are children Look watching. Look at that fucking leg. Go back, to, go back to James, please. Go back to James. <laughs> Cooper's Fred Eagle on the Throttle Out Show. If you're uh, working in the shop you're, and you're not watching, you're missing out right now. <laughs> that was free of charge. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyway, it's no idea. So, like I said, I, I depending on how things go, but I just don't have a ton of time to be there every single day. And, you know, we have good help there. Um, it, but when everything starts going on the road and and guys come back and trucks are in shrambles, we're going to need more help. And and I, I like to have the guys with experience so we can get stuff done and back on the road again. But obviously experience is hard to come by. But I also know that there's a lot of guys out there that are getting sick of other independence or Monster Jam or they don't want to be on the road as often as they are now or whatever it may be. And that's kind of where we're at. I mean, we have, I look, there's, but the promoters that have reached out to us and we haven't booked anything really major right now. There's four to five shows a weekend that we've been approached about within 12 hours from our home through October. So my guys can come home during the week and they don't have to technically live on the road. They can leave on Thursday and be home probably Sunday, which I think is a pretty cool gig if they live in Minnesota. I mean, they can, heck, this week they'll leave Friday morning, get down there, run Saturday, they'll be home Sunday night if they wanted to. What's wrong with that? I mean, that to me, that's pretty awesome. Then you have four days, five days to work in the shop and and um, or take a day off. And I told them that if your trucks are good to go and you didn't destroy them, you come back Monday, check them over, maintenance them, make sure nothing's majorly broke, nothing needs major repair. And if the next team only has one truck, why don't you guys team up on it, get it done Monday, take Tuesday, Wednesday off and go lay on the beach or, or go do whatever you want to do and come back to work <laughs> Thursday and... And, and do it over again you know so that's kind of my plan if it works out we'll see now we need to start wrapping this up we, we got dogs to walk and uh, we got other things i know ever yeah we got this guy i gotta here, eat who's basically i'm wasting right away now. um spence anybody in the comment section got anything that we want to go ahead and, and end this stream with um honestly comments have been great all night you guys have been asking a lot of great questions i think we covered everything especially everything that people have been concerned about in other facebook groups uh we covered wild thing we covered carolina crusher um i guess with carolina crusher any chance we could get carolina crusher to be a ford uh just asking for a friend Boo. why, <laughs> why ruin it because <laughs> i mean monster patrol has been a ford a chevy and a dodge i think carolina crusher should have a chance at being a ford but that's just me you just wanted to lose? Oh, man. <laughs> no. No, James is a racer. He knows that Ford stands for first on race day. Okay. <laughs> Not a lot of confidence. Yeah, we'll okay, we'll, anyway. We don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I guess to me right now, we. I want to go old school. So we'll see. You might see an old square body Chev for Carolina Crusher. I don't know. We'll see. Well, James, I just right. want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight, man. I, I know this discussion could go on for days. I mean, we need to have you back <laughs> on at, at some point. But thank you so much for coming on with us tonight. Congratulations on buying the operation. Add more trucks to your fleet. Like I said, you are becoming, if you haven't already been there already, but you are becoming the, the modern-day Paul Schaefer. Um, once again, congratulations, and thank you so much for coming on the show. No, and thank you guys. Um, you know, I appreciate what you do for the sport and the industry. And, uh, you know, don't be surprised if uh, you're like, dude, what are you doing? And we need you back on the show because there's a lot of things in the works. And and uh, we're not done. So we'll see you guys soon. We're not done. Official word straight from the horse's mouth, James. Trantina, everybody. And y'all, thank you for tuning in tonight. Go to the Throttle Out store, get you some new merch we got there. We got more stuff on the way as well. Huge shout out to High Octane Coffee. And remember, when in doubt, Throttle Out. We'll see y'all in the next one.